Are you talking about when I got out? No, I mean, from civilian life to military life. Uh, no, not really, because like I said, I, I was exposed to it pretty much my whole life, so I kind of yeah. knew, like, what the military was all about and how it worked. Okay. So it wasn't really that big of a shift. I know for a lot of people, like, they're like, I didn't know it was going to be this bad. You're like, I knew it was this bad. So yeah. It's really not that difficult. Um, do you feel like being in the military changed your outlook on life in, in any way? Oh, yeah, Definitely. It definitely gives you a different aspect of it. You I mean, you kind of see yourself as like, you know, one of the herd when you're before you go in, and then you come out, or even while you're in, it's like you're part of something special. Mm -hmm. Especially for me, since I was one of the smaller branches, it was like I am, you know, I'm not just the mass in the army. I'm not just the mass in the navy. I'm, I'm a marine, and I and the difference a lot is I carry my title everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to a lot of other service members. It's, you know, I'm prior Navy, I'm prior Army. You'll never hear a Marine say this. I'm always, I will always and forever hold my title. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when did you leave the military? What year? I left in 2012. And was there anything that prompted that decision? I said something stupid. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we're going to move on to um, your life after the military and kind oh, of coming to college. So, you had a couple jobs after you left the military, correct? Oh, I've had a whole bunch of jobs. Um, can you describe, like, the ones you enjoyed the most or least? Uh, I mean, I was a tow truck driver for a while, and that's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're really good at it, I mean, you get, like, I, you get to go all over the place. You get to meet a lot of really cool people. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I'm usually really friendly because I've met a lot of people. I just don't like people touching me. It's really weird. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, like, you meet a lot of really cool people. It's really stressful because, like... Normal jobs, nine to five, you get to hang up your uniform and, mm -hmm. you know, you get to go on about your day. But for me, it was your cell phone's always on you. You know, I'll call you at, I've been called at two in the morning to go pick up someone's car. I've been called at, you know, you see Rex at like four in the morning mm -hmm. and you see that dude that's out there picking up the tow truck. Yeah, that was me, you know, groggy. You can barely see because you just woke up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's your life. I mean, you get decent money in some places, but it's, it's not bad. The worst job I ever had, probably the one I, I actually I just quit Logan's because I refused to do something. The manager was just like, he cared more about being people's friends than he was about being a manager. Yeah. And I'm not down for that. So yeah, I literally just like in the middle of, like what is it? We opened at eleven. I started driving home at one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> um, was it difficult for you to transition back into the civilian working world after being in the military? Oh God, yes. How so? Because see, okay, life is like a like like a highway, right? In the mm -hmm. military, everybody has their own lane, right? And you stay in your lane, right? You don't shift lanes, you don't go back. What do you do if you get in trouble? But whatever rank you are, you stay in your lane, right? It's like a huge like nine lane highway. But if you go to the civilian world, right? You guys have a huge nine lane highway, but there's no lanes. You just do whatever you want, and it's irritating because I'm you get so used to like this is your job and you do your job, and mm -hmm. then it's like people want to run into each other and cause accidents. And if you just stay in your lane and do your job, everything's fine. But civilians don't like to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, where did you go to college before coming to USC? I went to Aiken Tech. And why did you decide to enroll in USC Aiken? I was going to originally start for radiology, but then I realized through the two semesters that I wasn't going to make the cutoff for the classes, and I really didn't want to wait a year because you lose a lot of information in a year. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect you to know it, so I decided to just change my major to education and come over here. Okay. Um, do you like it here so far? Yeah, it's not bad. What do you like about it? Uh, I mean, I just go to school. I, <laughs> I'm one of those people, I'm really antisocial. I'd rather just sit in my house and play my video games and you know watch TV than go outside and do stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I don't understand the whole ice event because they're not entertaining. <laughs> Yeah. They're not, like, I don't know. But, I mean, it's not, like I said, it's not really bad. I mean, there's nothing I really, like, super like about it. It's just, mm -hmm. like, one of those things you got to, like, put your head down and just trudge through and get out. Okay. So, um, you're an education major, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, I was, but I'm, like I said, I'm not coming back next semester. I'm going to be a correctional officer because that's more okay. militaristic for me. So, um, even, even so, that... Why did you first choose education? Oh, because you got to teach to be a football coach, which I think is ridiculous. 
Like, why do I need to teach a subject just to, to show you how to play football? Okay. Um, do you feel that it's different being a student veteran than like a traditional student right out of high school? Or I think it is, mainly because, what, the average age of students here is like, what, we'll say, what, 20? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, I'm 32. I've, like you said, I've done a whole bunch of stuff in my life. I've had more experiences, and then you sit through these classes, and they're like, oh, yeah, da, da, and you're like, no, it's not, not how the world works, mm -hmm. and that's, I think that's one of the biggest problems with education is, is they show y'all, really, you're like pampered before you hit the actual world, and then you hit the actual world, and you're like, this isn't anything like college, it's like, I'm fully aware of that part, I've been in this life. Okay, and do you think that that awareness has made it easier or harder for I think school. sometimes it makes it harder because you already have formed an opinion about stuff and then teachers are like, oh, like government. Mm -hmm. Like, I argue with my government teacher all the time. <laughs> because I'm I'm really in the middle, but it's, you already have opinions and they're trying to like, not necessarily indoctrinate you into an opinion, but teach you a certain way and you're like, I've already been doing this long enough to yeah. where, you know, I have my opinions about things. Um, do you feel like professors or other students treat you differently because you're a veteran? No, because I don't. A lot of them really don't know. So I just, like I said, I don't talk very much. Yeah. And can you tell me about your present family? You have kids. Correct? Yeah, I know. I have six kids. They're awesome. <laughs> I love them to death. Uh, they range from fourteen to six. Wow. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I have two biological, but my wife, my current wife, has four. Mm -hmm. So we have six kids total. My oldest is an ROTC, great kid, smart, honors kid, wants to join the military, which I'm, you know, I'm all for. Yeah. Uh, then you got the second oldest, which is Tito. That's literally his name. I have no idea why his dad picked that name. Uh, troublemaker, but he's like really gifted in music. He did play football until he smarted off to a teacher. <laughs> I'm trying to teach him that if you just keep your mouth shut, then I'll have ammo to come like yell at your teachers. But every time he does it, he yells at the teacher, and I'm like, I have, I can't do anything. And then after that, you have Jamie, which he's a, he's a smart kid, just run of the mill, really sensitive though. Then you have my two, which I have my oldest is Jared, and that kid is just hysterical. Like he makes horrible puns all the time. He thinks they're funny. Apparently he's a man because he has arm hair. <laughs> and then you have my youngest, which is Xander. His actual name is Alexander, but we just call him Xander. Which, don't try to ask that kid how to spell his name. He spells Xander. He doesn't put the A-L in front of it. <laughs> and he's argued with the teachers all the time. It's hysterical. And then you have Sam, who's our little girl. Which, that's pretty much like a tomboy because she just yeah. beats up everybody else. <laughs> she's not going to date till she's 30. <laughs> um, so, where do you... Where would you like to be in 10 years? In 10 yeah. years? Mm -hmm. How old does that make me? 40... 42 in 10 years mm -hmm. I mean it, I don't know, own my own house uh, get a Jeep mm, I said 10 years I'll have one two three four maybe five kids out of my house which is really nice because you don't want them to come back <laughs> uh, I just like I said just own my own house having a job planning for retirement mm -hmm. maybe Retiring really soon, looking to sell my house, buy an RV. Yeah. Because that's how you live through retirement, just buy an RV or a boat, <laughs> and just drive around, send all my mail to my kid's house, don't care about them. <laughs> um, so you said you want to be a corrections officer. Mm -hmm. So how did your military career influence that? Well, because I'm, I'm used to the structure, mm -hmm. and I'm used to, like, being in charge of people, so being able to do that with... You know, what I've learned through that is actually going to help because it's more of a militaristic, like, rank style and you fit in somewhere and you don't, you don't, you don't cross lanes, you just stay in your lane. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot less irritating than these jobs because people try to get out of their lane and it's just <laughs> obnoxious. Okay. And is there anything else you'd like to say about your military career or your future or anything before we wrap up? No, I mean, I mean, I got stories and stuff. We did, we did dumb stuff all the time. My buddy Cahill trying to hold him up when he was drunk in formation. Which, by the way, is a lot of fun. If you ever try it, don't do it. 
Uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun out there. If you ever get a chance, do it. Okay. Because it's funny because you always get people... Like, when you're in, it's really funny because when you're in, all you do is complain about being in. It's all you ever do. Is all you ever hear is people, they just, they just complain and complain and complain. This place sucks. You know, screw that guy. Blah, blah, whatever. And then you get out. And, like, two weeks later, all you can talk about is being in. And, like, because it's, it's the people that make it. It's not really the institution. Yeah. Like, nobody can... People can care less about, you know, oh, my CEO was happier or my whatever. No, it's my guys. That's who we cared about. It was making sure they were safe. They were home. They were... Had their jobs. They did it. It was just all about my guys. Okay. Well, um, thank you for your time today and oh, for no your problem. service. Thank you.